Okay, so uh, great to be with you and uh, I haven't been to uh, the Lucknow Center for a long time. I don't remember, maybe five, six years. It's been, normally I try to come see the batch at least once, but uh, I think COVID say it's sort of delay ho gaya and such, so it's good to be back here. So uh, shall we start our Q&A? Is that good? So first question. Hello, sir. Good morning. My name is Pravin Kumar from JNB Manpuri, Uttar Pradesh. My question to you is, even after having 140 crore population, the performance of Indian sport is very disappointing. How can it be changed, sir? That's a very good question. There was a book I read uh, maybe like two, three years ago. It was called The Bolt Factory. Aap jante ho Usain Bolt ko? Yes, Apne hero Usain Bolt. So, so Usain Bolt basically came from Jamaica. And do you know where Jamaica is? So Jamaica is part of the West Indies and it's in the Caribbean near the US. It's a very small country. It's a small island. And the, the Jamaican population probably is no more than a few million people. It might not even be more than population of Lucknow and Kanpur combined. But they produce a lot of sprinters. Jamaica produces a lot of sprinters and uh, general track and field. And also they have basically dominated sprinting. So basically the United States has a population which is almost 70 times the population of Jamaica. In the United States, we have very good sports facilities and very good infrastructure to train athletes and sprinters. But when the Olympics takes place, Jamaica dominates, right? So it does, it does even better than the US does. India got the naam and shan nahi hai, you know? So uh, one of the things I, I've been doing with my family since 2004 is we have gone to all the Olympics. So in 2004, we went to Athens. 2008, I went to Beijing. 2012, went to London. 2016, went to Rio in South America. And the one I couldn't go to was during COVID 2020 was Tokyo. I, so that was the one that got missed. So 2024, we will go And when I go for the Olympics, I only get tickets for track and field because uh, track and field is the most exciting. And uh, one time, I think when I was in Beijing, we had really good seats. And so when they were going to have the 200 meter final, Usain Bolt is getting ready to run. And I'm screaming at him you know, from the stand. So he looks, he actually got, he looked, who is talking about it? So I said, now he will be sprinting, I don't know what will happen, he distract him. So then I said, I'd better keep quiet. But when you read the book, The Bold Factory, so what happens, there's, there's something unusual about, about the way humans get specialized. So, Abhi jaise US mein, baseball bhoot popular hai. Like cricket is popular here, baseball is popular in the US, right? So all kids, since they are really small, they are all playing baseball. And just like we have IPL in India, we have professional baseball leagues in the US. Jo players hain baseball ke US mein, more than 50-60% have come from other countries. And they have come from very small countries, like Jamaica. So like Dominican Republic is a very small island. Waha se baseball player are hai. So US mein itna bada population hai. And yeh chote chote countries se ekdam top player are hai. So why, why is that happening? Why does Jamaica produce such great sprinters? Why does Dominican Republic produce such great baseball players. Why does, why does Brazil 
produce such great soccer players. You know, Brazil produces great football players. So why does this happen? So if you, if you look at the example of Jamaica, what happens in Jamaica is that from the age of about 10 or 11, in the whole island and all the schools, they are running a lot of competitions for track and field. So there's a very deep interest. And what they do is they, they have coaches in Jamaica who have gone to Olympics, they have done well in the past. So those who are world-class coaches, they are schools when they are 10 or 11 years old. And they are identifying particular kids who they think could have potential. They could have potential to do that. And what they're, what they're doing then is, they are, it's kind of like the Dakshana system. They are gathering these best kids who are 10, 12 years old from the whole island. They bring them to one school. Like you have brought them here, like all the 11, 12, 13 year old sprinters are एक स्कूल में आ जाते हैं एंड वो जो स्कूल में लाते हैं वहां पर अच्छा ट्रैक है सब है और जो कोचेस हैं उनके वहां के वो ओलंपियंस रहे हैं द द द गाय हु इज कोचिंग हुसैन बोल्ट हिमसेल्फ वाज अ स्प्रिंटर इन द ओलंपिक्स बिफोर सो व्हाट हैपेंस इज दैट व्हेन दीस किड्स आर 13 14 इयर्स ओल्ड दे हैव नाउ बीन गेटिंग 2 3 इयर्स ऑफ वेरी स्ट्रांग प्रोफेशनल कोचिंग फॉर स्प्रिंटिंग विद द बेस्ट coaches and what happens in Jamaica that when there is a track and field meet जैसे आपका लखनाव में track and field meet होएगा Jamaica में जब even 14 year old high school students का जो track and field meet होता है it is in a stadium of 50,000 people और ticket नहीं मिलती है so the whole country is excited to watch the best 14 year old sprinters and so these kids who are just emerging they are treated like rock stars so 14 15 pe the kids who are doing really well then they are further separated into one on one coaching with particular coaches so no other country in the world has this type of a system specifically for sprinters it doesn't exist. And if you look at a place like India, so if Dakshna had done for sprinters what we have done for JE coaching in India, bhot sare medal a jate. Lekin wo kehte hai na ghalib, ye na thi hamari kismat. Okay. But basically the same system that we are using in Dakshna, you can actually use in any any sport and uh, so what happens is that uh, when I used to when I used to go to New York when I first went to the US sare taxi driver sardar the okay so New York is not part of the part of India it is a separate you know it's part of the US why were all the taxi drivers in New York sardarjis the reason they were sardarjis is first there were very few sardars who were cab drivers then some more Sazars came. They looked at what should we do? What kind of work can we do? So they saw that we can drive a taxi. So the existing Sazars trained them, explained how it works. And then more Sazars started doing taxi driving. And then over time, basically, it became so that more and more Sikhs went into driving cabs. Similarly, in, in New York, all the laundries, almost all the laundries are owned by Koreans. Same thing happened. It's not that they are better at doing laundry. And when more Koreans came, they were just looking at what can we do. They looked at what other Koreans were doing and they started to do the same thing. And uh, so you, you end up in the world with all these kind of specialized things everywhere. And these specialized things everywhere happen because humans are driven by peers. So what happens in, in Jamaica, every parent in Jamaica, when they have a 10-year-old boy or girl, 
दे आर वेरी कीन कि ये स्प्रिंटर बने वो पांच साल की उम्र से बात कर रहे हैं अपने बच्चों के साथ कि आप स्प्रिंटर बनो एंड द रोल मॉडल्स ऑल द अमिताभ बच्चन ऑफ जमेकार आर ऑल स्प्रिंटर्स राइट सो बेसिकली देर इज अ वेरी डीप इंटरेस्ट द किड्स है सो इवन हुसैन बोल्ट हुसैन बोल्ट वॉज वेरी इंटरेस्टेड इन क्रिकेट ही वॉज प्लेइंग लॉट ऑफ क्रिकेट एंड ही कुड है a very good cricketer he is very athletic but he said that in jamaica people don't care about cricket so much as they care about sprinting and so he went that way so now we get to india and we see that we have this very large population 140 crores and i remember there was a journalist before you guys were born there was a journalist some of the people in the back might know him kushwant singh some of you may have heard of kushwant singh So Kushwan Singh used to be the editor of Illustrated Weekly of India which doesn't exist anymore. And I remember when I was a kid I was maybe 10 years old or something and I was looking at this Illustrated Weekly that had come. And uh, the title was at that time at that time India's population was maybe 70 crores. So the title of that article was 70 crores and not one bronze. Matlab what you were saying is a 70 crore population is there. Forget track and field in any field we didn't even get a, a medal we didn't even get a medal in hockey right so it is actually very easy for india to become powerhouse in any sport it wants to become a powerhouse in and the only thing that has to happen is dakshina has to shift from je to sprinting and ye जे ई टू स्प्रिंटिंग शिफ्ट करने को कोई बड़ी बात नहीं है इट्स एक्चुअली वेरी ईजी टू डू इफ इफ यू वॉन्टेड टू डू इट इज वेरी ईजी टू बिकॉज ऑल वी हैव टू डू इज अभी जैसे जे एन वी सिस्टम है यहाँ पर स्पोर्ट्स हो रहे हैं क्या क्या हो रहा है राइट यू हैव स्पोर्ट्स डे यू हैव ऑल दीज थिंग्स गोइंग ऑन वी जस्ट हैव टू लुक एट हु हैज टैलेंट एंड देन वी हैव टू ब्रिंग दैट टैलेंट गिव द इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर गिव द कोचिंग एंड so what happens in in india is the parents they are very happy when their kids are going for je coaching or neet coaching because unko lagta hai ke zindagi ban jayegi now if we tell the indian parents we will take your kid and make them a sprinter they will not be interested they say wo kya karega 25 saal ke baad ya 30 saal ke baad kya karega wo sprint nahi kar payega so unse kya hoga so there would need to be some change in mindset but in india it has already happened like you know there is a lot of interest in cricket right so india produces great cricketers and but the funny thing is that if you look at a place like sri lanka or if you look at like a place like bangladesh or even if you look like a place like pakistan these are much smaller countries than india so when india plays sri lanka we should beat the hell out of them in cricket but sometimes that doesn't happen sometimes they beat us sometimes bangladesh beats us but again the reason they beat us is so if you if you look at a place like sri lanka they have a system for cricket in high school which is just like sprinting in jamaica logon ko bahut interest hai ke अच्छे क्रिकेटर बने सो देर सम देर सम स्कूल इन श्रीलंका वेर द स्कूल टीम जस्ट वन स्कूल टीम मे बीट द इंडिया अंडर नाइनटीन टीम बिकॉज दे आर सो सो गुड एंड दे कम फ्रॉम ऑल ओवर एंड ऑल दैट सो एक्चुअली योर क्वेश्चन इज अ वेरी गुड क्वेश्चन ह्यूमन्स कैन गेट वेरी गुड इफ देर इज अ कैन ऑफ अ यू नो क्रिटिकल मैथ दैट कम्स टूगेदर लाइक like i think i think what has happened in india so if you look at let's say the iit system right if you look at the iit system the iit system actually does not exist anywhere in the world except india so what i mean by that is that if you go back to the very first iit which was being crea- created i think I- iit kharagpur was the first one so when we were when the first iit was being created india needed lot of help because we didn't have anything so basically they went to a few us us universities and they like mit and few other universities 
and those universities basically provided the initial faculty. So MIT, Stanford, a bunch of US universities, they sent their professors here. Unone pura system create kiya. So actually the IIT system is a mirror of the US education system and it looks very different from other colleges. So I'll give you some examples of how the IITs are different and that came straight from the US. Indian education system by and large does not trust the teacher or the professor. So what happens is, let's say 10th standard ka board exam hai. That board exam paper is not set by the school. It's set by a central body, right? The grading of that paper doesn't also happen in the school, central body. And everything is being controlled by the central body. So they, the reason they are doing all that is because they, they don't have a trust that if they give it all locally, it will happen properly. So they have kept it central. If you look at US universities, like let's say if I look at MIT for example, the trust has been given to the professor. So what happens is if I take a class in computer science at MIT, let's say programming 101, there's a class. The professor is going to set the curriculum. The professor is going to decide how the grading will be done. So first is what will happen in the US is the professor will come to class and he'll say, okay, there is out of 100 marks that we will judge you on at the end of the year, at the end of the semester, 10 marks is for attendance. If you attend all the classes, you get 10 marks. Every time you miss one class, you miss one, one point. Then they'll say, your final exam hoiga, uska weight 30% hai. So 10% attendance, 30% final exam. And then they will be, he'll say, there will be two quizzes during the semester, which may have 20% weight each. So 20, 40, 70, 80%, right? We have covered 80% of the marks. And then he'll say that four times, there will be a surprise test, each one having 5% weightage. Matlab, he says that suddenly one day in class, I will give a surprise test. You don't know when that test is going to come. All of these rules are being set by that professor for that class. If you take the class the next semester with a different professor, he will have different set of rules. He may say a final exam is 60%, right? So the power has been given to the professor and the system is tr trusting the professor. So when IIT system came to India from the US, they completely imported that system. So when you go to IIT, exactly the same thing happens. Whatever class you take, the professor is going to decide everything. The professor is going to decide what book he's going to use. He's going to decide what he's going to teach you. So if you take the same class with a different professor next semester, everything may be different, right? And so the trust has been given to the, the professor. And so the IIT system, so it's, it's really interesting to look at the IIT system. So what happened is that if I look at, so let's say if I look at a place like MIT, So MIT is the number one technical institute in the US, right? It's the top, top school. But unka jo admission criteria hai, there is no such thing as JE in US. The, the way you get admission to IIT, IIT is three or four things. So first thing is your high school GPA. So high school GPA means the same thing is happening in high school in the US. If I am going to some high school in California, the teacher in the high school is setting the curriculum, he's doing the testing, he's giving the grades, there's no central body. Control has been given to the teacher. Okay, the system that we have in IIT in the US exists even in the high school system. So, jo high school ka GPA hai, agar if I go to one high school in California and someone else goes to another high school in Texas, you cannot compare these two directly. 
because one teacher may be easy to give high, high scores, the other teacher may be hard. But they take the high school GPA, then they take a standard test, the SAT, scholastic after test, and then there is a essay, and then other things like your parents. So what MIT does, if your parents went to MIT, let's say your father went to MIT, they will give you some preference. They'll say, thoda kam bhi hoega to hum le lenge. And the fifth is money. So, agar main MIT ko bada donation deta hoon, they will make it easier for my children to get admission. Right? So, you look at the way MIT is admitting the students. High school ka GPA le rahe hain, SAT le rahe hain, essay, you have to write an essay, which means it's a writing skills that come in. Then, you know, did your parents go there or not? And have you given any donation or not? If you compare this to IIT, it is just JE, right? There's no other criteria. There's one criteria, the JE criteria. That's it. And so, actually, the funny thing about the IITs is we took the system from the US, but, and Inside the IIT, it looks just like the US system. But they wanted to create a system which was more rigorous and trustable in the Indian context. So they changed the admission format to be based on a single test. And so actually what ended up happening is that when IIT is admitting someone, and when MIT is admitting someone, the IIT system of admission is a better system. It's a more objective, precise system. So we end up with higher quality students in IIT than you would end up in MIT, right? And because we have higher quality students coming in, you have great quality students going out. So the IITs, so MIT, for example, if I look at a place like MIT, the professors are very good. The infrastructure is very good. Everything is really good. In, if you look at IIT, I, mean, I was just looking the other day on TV, I turned on TV, 40% of professor positions are empty. It's vacancy. I think I, I forget, it was like 600 or 800 faculty positions across the IITs are not even filled, which means that when you go to IIT Bombay and they need, let's say, 15 or 20 professors for computer science, there are only eight over there. So that is a big problem. That means that what classes will become bigger or they will have some teaching assistant or something else like that going on. That is not a good situation. We don't have that situation in MIT. It will not going to have 40% vacancy. They will fill the roles. Part of the reason MIT doesn't have a problem filling the roles is they don't have to pay people certain amount of salary. Like India, may all the salaries are very precise. So reason why the IITs have all these openings is that they need very advanced skills to become an IIT professor. But they don't pay you much. Industry companies will pay you more than that. And so the people are not opting to become professors. So basically what I'm trying to say is that what happened with IIT in India is exactly what happened to sprinting in Jamaica. We created a system in India which is creating great engineers. And we created a system that is creating better engineers than anywhere in the world. In fact, what happened is a system that was copied from a great system, the copycat has become better than the original. Right, we have copied India system, Indian, the Indian engineering system. So quality of IIT professors is not that good. MIT has better professors. But incoming student quality is much higher. And the, there's another thing that is happening about why, why the IITs are doing so well. But I'll get to your, your situation there. So, Hamara jo 
humans ka jo physical setup hai and the way we are designed as humans when a baby is born the birth canal is very narrow and so when a human baby is born the brain is it comes out very underdeveloped because the birth canal is so narrow you cannot have a big brain you cannot deliver the baby so the human brain goes through very rapid growth in the first 5 years of life so first 5 or 6 years of life the size of the human brain is growing a lot and it's expanding a lot because it could not do that when the woman is pregnant it happens after birth so and that's why in the in the case of humans the infancy and amount of care a baby needs early in life is very high you know both parents are required a lot of care is needed because the baby has arrived very undeveloped so human brain goes through a lot of growth in the first 5 years then from the age of 11 to 20 in this age what happens is that the brain starts specializing so the synapse connections actually start getting cut so what that means is that the human brain is perfectly set up only in this window of time so if you look at the entire human life span of 80 years or 90 years it's only in this 10 year period that the brain is completely open to specialize in whatever you want so for example if bill gates starts programming at the age of 11 for example what will happen is that by the time he is 20 years old he will become such a good programmer that if someone else starts programming at the age of 20 it will take more than 30 years for them to even get the same level of skill so what someone can do in 10 years over here later in life will take even 30 40 years to have the same amount of expertise because the whatever you are exposed to what will happen is the brain will put more of the real estate into that area now what happens in the education system around the world is from the age of 11 to 20 we are or at least from 11 to 18 we are not allowed to specialize we are told to study all subjects right you know basically now what happens in india is after 16 they start separating commerce art science after 16 they start separating them but but for the most part you are required to study all subjects so if you look at a person like michelangelo so michelangelo was a great sculptor and painter and so on he started sculpting statues when he was 9 or 10 years old he didn't go to school he was working full time doing statue sculpting from the age of 10 so what happened in michelangelo is that by the time he became 20 years old he became a really good sculptor and painter nobody else can match that because that's all he has done he has not gone to school for those for that period of time and so so basically and if i look, go back to the jamaican sprinters what they are doing is they have they have told those kids ke padhne ki zyada zarurat nahi hai sprinting pe focus rakho just do bare minimum for other things but focus on sprinting so what happens is in this 11 to 20 age band for most of the world people are not allowed to specialize and so that window of time when you can actually become really good at something that window closes and then people start sp- trying to specialize later later the thing is over now if i come to je prep So what happens in JE prep? JE prep is going on from let's say 16 to 19, right? You may sometime drop one year, but it starts at 16, right? Now what has also happened in India? In some cases, it's starting at 14, right? You are Ashfaq, you are starting in ninth standard. Yes, sir. Are you starting before ninth standard? Yes, sir. From class six. From? Class six. Class six. So class six may. umar 11 hai right so the best time to start je coaching is class 6 if 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 you want a commercial for your coaching institute of why you should start in class 6 
just take the film from him. Okay? <laughs> so what should happen to have perfect coaching for JE is you start in class six. You start focusing on physics, chemistry, math in class six. And by the time you finish, what will happen is that nowhere else in the world, so India, what has happened is this happened by accident. What happened by, in India by accident is the IIT system came to India. Because there was no trust in having a complicated admission system, they came up with a very simple admission system that they just had to be JE. And because there's such a large population trying to get these seats, there is huge effort put to try to get a seat in IIT. And so all of you, you know, we, we did a test, we found the best of you, we brought you here, we are coaching you, but actually we, start, we are starting five years too late. We missed the 11 to 15 window, right? And if, if Dakshina wants to do it even better, we would start even earlier. But, but one of the things that happened in the JNB system, also by accident, is what happens is in the JNB system, there's a JNB selection test. That happens at the age of 11. 10, 11 is when you are taking the JNB selection test. So what happens is when you get selected in JNB, there are like 40 lakh students. I think how many students are taking the test? JNB, ST, how many kids take the test every year? Ravi. He's MIA. So I think it's like 30 lakh students are taking JNBST. Okay, and these 30 lakh students are trying to get one of 40,000 seats in the 600 JNBs. The total number of seats is 40,000. So from 30 lakhs to 40,000 is like 1.3%. Okay, so just like a very small number of kids who take that test get into JNB. So one of the things that happens JNB, which is really good is, at the age of 11, you are with other kids who are interested in the, almost the same thing. Unfortunately, the coaching starts at 16, but 16 is still good. It's better than the rest of the world. The rest of the world is not, when, when a kid goes to MIT, before he goes to MIT, he has not done any JE coaching. He has not spent more time on physics or more time on math or any of that. He has not done any of those things. His focus on physics, chemistry, math starts at 18 in the US. We are starting two to three years earlier, and in some cases we are starting at 11. So what, when you, if you go to Bill Gates and you ask Bill Gates, what is the number one university in the world that you want to recruit people for Microsoft? He says IIT. So the US has Stanford, MIT, RPI, they're really, really good schools. These are top end schools. But he has found that Microsoft engineers who come from IIT system in India are better than the engineers that are coming from MIT in the US. And the reason they are better is because they started working earlier. And so to go back to your question about why we are not doing well in sports, the answer is really simple. You have to start early and you have to have a focus system. Abhi, the problem that happened is that a person like Monish decided he doesn't care about sprinters. He cares about engineers. If I had cared about sprinters as much as I cared about engineers, we would go head to head. There'd be some Bahadur Singh going head to head with Usain Bolt at the Olympics. But wo hua nahi. So what, what I have decided is I have left it to you. You now know how to create sprinters, right? So jab aap Amir ho jaoge na, Dakshinar mat kholna, sprinting academy kholna. What do you say? Yes, sir. Okay, and then any, any sport you are interested in, like abhi, you know, 32 teams go for World Cup. Has India ever made it to the World Cup? Football ka World Cup hua na abhi. Have you ever seen India in the top 32 in the World Cup? It has never happened in the history of India, zero, okay? There are very small countries, like, you know, tiny countries in Africa, 
which are in the World Cup. How can a small country, five million people or something, produce that much talent? India has so many people playing football all over the place. So why is Brazil, so a lot of countries play football, right? Why is Brazil great at football? So here's, here's what is happening in Brazil. Brazil ke jo sare football players hai, the top Brazilian football players, they have all come from the slums of Brazil. So the people who are the best football players in Brazil from the beginning, from Pele onwards, they have all come from very poor families. They have not come from the rich families. So why have they come from the poor families? So let's say ye, this is the size of a soccer field. Let's say this is the size. So when you are growing up in a slum in Brazil, we don't, you, they don't have land. You know how the slums are, right? They're all packed together. There's no land. So you can't actually have a field like this in the middle of a slum where these kids can play and practice football. Jo Brazil ka jo slum hai, usme jo football field hai, wo ye size ka hai. So these top Brazilian football players, when they are very small kids, they are playing football in a very small field, not a normal soccer field. It's, it's literally like one-sixth the size. So the size of the field is one-sixth, but you have 22 players on the field, right? So there are players here. So you know what happens? They become incredible at dribbling. Up football ko idhar se udhar kaise leke jaoge? Itne to log hai. You have to be really good at dribbling, right? Because on a per square foot basis, you have many more people trying to stop you. So they grow up basically playing football like this. To baad mein jab unko pura bada field milta hai football khelne ko, bolta ye to bahut asan kaam hai abhi to. Main to chote field mein idhar udhar ghum ke ja raha hu. Abhi to mere ko pura field mil gaya. Nowhere else in the world, except Brazil and Argentina. These are the only two countries where the kids grow up learning football like that. See, India also what happens with cricket, okay? The matches are going on on the road, right? Wo bowling kar hai road pe, fir gaadi aari hai, wo sab nikal rahe hai, fir fir se bowling shuru ho jati hai, right? You will produce really good batsmen, okay? So if you look at someone like Tendulkar, so, or even if you look at someone like Virat Kohli. So one of the things about someone like Virat Kohli or Tendulkar is, this is a cricket field, okay? Here's the wickets. Here is our man Tendulkar over here. You know what he does? He just spends about 10 seconds looking around. You don't even notice it, but you look at his videos, he takes a very quick view of the field. And in his head, what he has, he has programmed, before he hits the ball, he knows the location of all the fielders. He knows in his head, he knows precisely where every fielder is sitting. Now, after the ball is bowled, if one fielder changes position, okay, he has reprogrammed his map. So what happens is, if you notice Raskar, Tendulkar, Virat Kohli, and all these people, when they hit the ball, two fielders ke beech mein se nikal raha hai. When I hit the cricket ball, jahan bhi ho, <laughs> you know, like I played with Amit, I have no idea where the fielders are. Like, laga do jahan bhi jata hai, jane do. Right? But that is not how, how Virat Kohli is playing. He has a map in his head. So there are extremely few batsmen in the world who can actually, because it's a very difficult thing to do. If you actually try to do it, that you actually keep a map in your head of like where every fielder is, and then you, what you have to do is the ball is coming at a far high speed. You have to keep it in your, in your mind where the field, because now you can't look at the fielder once the ball is coming, right? But you have to know that if I cut it this way, it will go at this angle, and there is nobody standing there. Right? I can hit it high, there's nobody to catch the ball. So what I'm, what I'm trying to say is that we, we get these specialized things because of accidents. So Brazil became a football powerhouse by accident. 
Nobody designed a system that the slum people will play in small area and all of that. And even today, what the funny thing is, this is very well known that why Brazilian football players are so good. It's well known. Nowhere in Europe do they even today, they can create a small field, right? They can create a small field and they can force the kids to play in that small field. It's not as much fun. It's much more work. Nobody wants to do that. So we will continue to see Brazil and Argentina dominate. The other thing about Brazil and Argentina is that the way these guys play football is completely different from the rest of the world. You look at someone like Messi, okay? The way Messi plays is like nobody else in the world. Nobody else plays like that. And go back to the history of Messi, he was a very poor, very poor family, right? So, so I think that the, the question you asked is a really good question because basically the answer is that any group of humans can get really good at anything they want to do. All you have to do is you have to design a system that is focused on that. And uh, now, you know, what has happened in the last few years is that uh, India has done reasonably well at shooting. You know, in the Olympics, we have got some medals in shooting. So what happens is that once we get some medals in shooting, people who are interested in shooting in India, there's little more interest in supporting them. Now, that guy who does the, the javelin, that Indian guy who does the javelin, what's his name? Yeah, yeah so Mr. Chopra, right? So now there will be more interest in high schools and schools for javelin because of him, right? So, so once you get some role models, role models are really important. It has to start with role models. Abhi, Jamaica had a bunch of role models, then they got Usain Bolt. And uh, so I really enjoyed the book, The Bolt Factory. So when I read the book, The Bolt Factory, they, they have these nicknames for these Jamaican sprinters. One of them, the nickname was Donkey Man, okay? And so this Donkey Man, when the book was written, Donkey Man was 14 years old, okay? He's just in, he's just in like eighth or ninth standard, right? But when the sprinting sports day is taking place, that stadium is like 50,000 people have come from all over the country. He is being treated like Shah Rukh Khan. You know, like he has a big fan following, people are wearing his shirt, all these things are going on. So Donkey Man feels like he's like at the center of the world and eventually he'll come to the Olympics and do well. So anyway, that gives you an idea about why we have no one in sports and why we could have people in sports. Why don't we go to the next question? Good morning, sir. I'm Akansha Kushwa from Janvi Farukhabad, Uttar Pradesh. I want to ask you that if you were the education minister of India, how would you like to see the education system for the better future of students? Thank you, sir. So as you know that if you make, the, make me the sports minister of India, India will do really well in sports. Do you agree with that? Right? If you make a sports minister, we will make a hero from zero. Right? If you make a education minister, then what will happen? What do you think will happen? So, I wish they made me the education minister, but I don't think they are planning to do that. But if they made me the education minister, <laughs> if they made me the education minister, I will make some changes. First change I'll make, I will ban private schools. So what I will say is that no one can start a private school, okay? Now, when you ban private schools, what happens is there are rich people. Rich people want their kids to go to good schools, right? But now all the schools are good, all the private schools are good, they have closed their schools. So what will the rich man do? And I will also say, well, first, all private schools are gone. Second, wherever you are living, your kid has to go to school in that, in that area, the school that is there, the government school that is there, your kid has to go there. And the third is, parents can provide as much funding as they want to that school. 
So, let's say JNV system here. So, let's say the country only has JNVs, right? Let's say every person has to go to a JNV. They can't go to any other school. There's no other school that exists. So, some guy is really rich, right? First, he wants to kill me because he's pissed off, okay? <laughs> but I will have a lot of security, so they can't kill me. It's okay, right? So, they can't kill me, then he's going to say, ye to problem ho gaya ki main to itna ameer ho aur mere bacche ko government school mein bhej rahe so you know what he will do he'll get 20 crores to the school he'll say sabka bhala ho jaye wo theek hai mere bacche ka bhi bhala ho raha hai so what will happen is the rich people will start pumping a lot of money into the school not because they care about you they will pump the money because they care about their kids so what will happen what will end up happening is that the school is going to become fantastic, right? Now, the second thing I would do, so the, the simple thing to do, so this would be an ideal situation, you know, ban the schools and go this way. But you can, we can also do it, so the simple way to actually solve these problems is to actually look at what has already happened, okay? So we actually have a case study of schools in Delhi. So what happened is when the Aam Army Party came to power, they put a lot of focus on the schools, right? And actually, if you now go and see the government schools in Delhi, they look better than private schools. Like I was watching, swimming pool, there are volleyball ke courts, hai, the classrooms are very nice. They have put a lot of money. Now, in, that, in these schools, it is not the private people putting money. The government has put the money into these schools because they wanted to make the schools better. But they also did one more thing. So what, what they did was, they did not ban the private schools. But what they told the private schools is, you have to take underprivileged kids for free. So what they told the school, now the school doesn't want to do this. Okay, what they told the Delhi schools is, every 100 students you have, 10 have to be taken with no fees and 10 have to be taken from economic you know, income level that is very low. So now I have some relatives in Delhi. So I think it's a really good thing. Do you agree with this is a good thing that the government did? My relatives are pissed off, okay? Unko nahi pata hai, kaise soch raha Main to acha smile kar raha ke acha kaise chal raha hai. They don't really know what I'm thinking, right? So they are complaining to me, ye Kejriwal ne, humare modern school, so modern school Barakhamba is a top end private school. I mean, prime ministers have gone there, ministers have gone there, all these people, it's a very, very good school. So my cousin was really happy when his son got admission to modern school Barakhamba. They, he went there too. So he said, ye to bada acha school hai, sab theek hai. Phir wo Kejriwal sahab aa gaye. He said, you are so many children who are below poverty line. Hai, aisa hai. And first what the schools did was they ignored them. They basically tried to play games not to take these kids. Because they know that it's going to affect their reputation and different things. So what the Delhi government said, they went to the school and said, if this is not fixed in two months, we will cancel your school license. <laughs> so he did, they did something similar to what I wanted to do. What I was saying is, is ban the schools, right? What they said is, we're not banning it, but we will close you down. You will lose your license to run the school. So schools, so like, they got alarmed. They said, we can't, the infrastructure is closed. All the schools learned that they cannot play games, that they have to take those kids. And what, what the Delhi government did, they set up a hotline. They told any poor person, that if you live somewhere, you don't get admission in any school. Like, let's say some poor you know, son of a hawker goes to modern school. They don't let him come in the gate or whatever to give admission. He just calls that phone number. The team comes from there. The guy is in the school the next day. Okay, and, the, and the, what the government also did, is they told the school, you make us come enough times and we'll shut the school down. 
तो एक दो बार आ गए ठीक है बट अगर बार बार हमको आना पड़ेगा तो स्कूल बंद करा देंगे so what has happened actually in delhi now which is stunning in india to see this happen actually is all the schools have taken large numbers of underprivileged kids so now i was talking to my cousin without telling him how, how i am thinking okay i said so kaisa chal raha hai school mein he said buri halat hai i said kya ho raha hai he said he said my son sabia has decided this his son is like 7 or 8 years old he said my son sabia has decided that all his best friends are all these underprivileged he said uske sare ke sare jo best friends hain wo is sare ye servant ke bacche aa gaye hain wo inke best friend ban gaye hain to wo sabia ko bol rahe hain ki inse dosti mat karo jo ameer log hain unse dosti karo sabia doesn't care about all that he said no no i i like these kids i want to be friends with these kids okay so the parents don't know what to do because they are not able to control the kid in the school right so it is beautiful what has happened is the rich are mixing with the poor the poor are getting good education and the, so i am not a guy interested in politics or whatever i don't really particularly care about aam aadmi party versus bjp or versus whatever but what i will say this is that whatever was their motivation this was something really good that was done right and the thing about so if you make me education minister i will take the people who are done this in the delhi school and tell them let's do this in up and let's do this in bihar let's start because the system has already been proven once in india that we can make that work so i don't need to come up with a new system so one of the things in general i think with if you become education minister sports minister whatever is that you look at what is already working what is already working in some place and can you actually take that and use it somewhere else and now now aam aadmi party has won the state of punjab the education system in the state of punjab is pathetic i am from punjab even though i have no hair i am 50% sikh i know you can't see it because there's no hair but i'm 50% sikh both my grandmothers were sikh both my grandfathers were not sikh and one would think you know what happens in india someone is from andhra pradesh they want to help the people from andhra pradesh right someone is from bihar they want to help the people from bihar dakshina is the only place where the guy is from punjab and we have no scholars from punjab so main bar bar dakshina walon ko puchta hu punjab ka kya ho raha hai why do we have because i look at all the selections there are no selections from from, from the chandigarh region or punjab especially we get almost zero so they tell me sir unko sirf canada mein interest hai unko padhai mein interest nahi hai <laughs> ya unko sirf drugs mein interest hai you know and so it ends up that the guy who's from punjab has no people from his own state in the dakshina program which i think actually is really good i'm actually excited about that so now aam aadmi party has won in punjab a state where even the parents don't care about education they are only concerned about money coming from outside india and going to canada so the funny thing in canada is there's a city one of the large canadian cities is vancouver on the west coast so vancouver has three punjabi radio stations there's no hindi radio station there are three punjabi radio stations and they have a kabaddi stadium in vancouver with 40000 seats only matches are held between sikh teams in that place so their focus is elsewhere but one of the things i'm watching to see in the next few years is what happens in a place like punjab with aam aadmi party so i hope what they are doing is they are taking that team in delhi which has done this and now the other thing that's happened in dakshina is we go talk to all these non jnv systems so we used to take kids only from jnv but now we started taking kids at dakshina valley from all school systems we have written so many letters to the ministers of 
or the heads of education or heads of schools in so many states saying, please, you know, this is our program, you can send your kids and all that. No one responds to us. It's a free program, right? It benefits the children. There's no cost to the school. Nobody cares. We sent one letter to Delhi. Okay? They immediately called us. And when we were taking some time, they again called us. Okay? So Delhi was extremely interested in what Dakshina was doing. Now, Delhi is a small place. If you look at the whole of India, Delhi is a small place. So, Ravi, how many kids we have from Delhi? Is Ravi here? Yes. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah, but I think we are getting every year, we're getting more, a lot of kids are taking our test now. Yeah. yeah. So, Delhi, what has happened is, now the good news with this Kejriwal guy is, the guy went to IIT. Right? And so, actually, specifically, Amadi Party cares a lot about people going to IIT. So they have come, Delhi, Delhi government has come to us many times. They said, Hamare yaha center kholo. Hum aapke bachche, hum bachche bejenge, ye karenge, wo karenge. All the other states, we cannot get any answer, head or tail from them. Okay? So we can see actually the differences in the states. So I have plans when they make me the Minister of Education. Okay? I have plans. I'll let you know when they make the call. <laughs> Next question. Sir, I am Ajay Kumar from JNB Muradabad, Uttar Pradesh. Sir, my question to you is that, sir, you are doing a great job for the students of our country. Sir, are you satisfied by only this, or uh, are you have on, uh, any other wishes from your side? Thank you, sir. Okay, so that's have a seat. That's a that's a good question. Well, I think I think that my my view on Dakshina is that it has worked a lot better than I ever thought it would work. So I'm actually quite surprised that it uh, did work as well. If you, if you think about it, you know, I'm not in India. I'm usually in Texas wearing shorts and I'm not running Dakshina. And so I had to rely on other people. And what ended up happening is that we ended up with a really good team. And we also ended up with now we have a lot of alums, Dakshina alums who have joined us. They have joined as faculty, they have joined in management and so on. So that's actually worked out very well. But one of the things I learned, you know, so I have two gurus, Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. One of the things I learned from them, which was kind of took me a, lo a long time to actually figure this out, is that if you want to, if you want to do well in life, then what you should avoid doing is looking back. And you should try to focus on looking forward. So what I mean by that is, now let's say someone takes the IIT entrance exam. Let's say they get really good rank, rank 50 in India, their top rank. They did really well, okay? They really should not spend a lot of time thinking about that. What they should look at is, what is my next target? Don't look back and say, oh, I've done so well, this is great, whatever. Don't do that. Look at the next target and then the next target and keep going. So I am not actually that good at that. I'm trying to get better at that. So I think I, for me, I think what, one of the things I'm trying to get better at is a lot of people will come to me and say, Dakshina is doing great work, Dakshina is wonderful, this, that. It feels good to hear that. But really the focus needs to be on what can be done that can be even better, you know? And I've actually thought about, many times, I've thought about that maybe in five, 10 years, we should open the sprinting academy. That will be so much fun, you know, open a sprinting academy and set up a good infrastructure because it's, it's very easy to do. There's, you don't need much money or infrastructure for that. facilities And then you start going and identifying the talent and bring them there, and so we know, how to do all those things. So it'll be fun to kind of do that. So maybe we'll do that later, or maybe one of you can do that later. But basically, that's what I would say, that for my self-development, I think what is good for me to do is not look, at the, not look at the back, what happened, and to try to look forward. Next question. I am Dibdas Singh from JNV Manpuri, Uttar Pradesh. My question to you is, what are the reasons behind that you decided to visit COE Lucknow after five years? Thank you, sir. Oh, uh, why did I come after five years? 
Okay, that's good. Have a seat. <laughs> it's better to come after five years than to come after ten years. <laughs> right? <laughs> so, better late than never. And uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I enjoy the visits and I think that uh, what was happening is that many of the other locations of Dakshana, they were better connected by air, they were places where I could do some business work as well. So like, you know, Bangalore, Hyderabad, I used to go to Mumbai, so Pune was easy and so on. But uh, Lucknow now has become very easy because we have a lot more flights and a lot more non-stops and so on. So, mistake ho gaya. <laughs> so, so I will try not to repeat the mistake and I will try that we are basically able to, you know, I'm, I'm hoping I can, I can come here more often. But, but I do want to make sure I see all the Dakshna scholars at least once every time. So I missed some batches, you know, which was not good. So we'll try to make sure it doesn't happen again. How are we doing on time, Ravi? That's it. One more. Okay, so next question. I'm Amit Kumar from JNV Jalun, Uttar Pradesh. My question is, how would you feel if you were a student like me and getting less marks comparing with your classmates? And what, you, what would you do to achieve higher marks in your studies? Thank you, sir. Okay, that's a very good question. So, so I already explained when I, when I talked about sports and different things that humans are very heavily influenced by our peers. You know, People who are like us, who are doing certain things, we like to be like them. That's kind of how we are as humans. So there is a gravitational pull. So if your friends are better than you, you will get better. And if your friends are worse than you, then you will get worse. So you're going to move whichever way your friends are. And so one of the things, one of the easiest things that is possible to do is to look at your classmates, look at the people who you really admire. Like they have good study habits and they're doing things well and they're organized and different things. And you try to spend more time with them, try to become their friend and that sort of thing. And uh, that will help you develop better habits. The other thing that you can do is that, again, when you, so it is helpful. So let's say if you think, you know, IIT to go, this to do, that to do, so these are big, big goals. You have to break that problem down into much smaller goals. So I'll give you an example. There was a, there was a guy who was at JNV Bangalore, Ashok Kumar. Some of you may have heard of him. So Ashok, I think, got ranked 63 in the, in the JE exam and such. And now he's in, he works for Google. So what Ashok, what Ashok would do is that he was trying to maximize all the time available to do the best he could in the IIT exam. So all these kids used to complain to me that PT is wasting our time in the morning. We have no time. Is your PT hoti yes, sir. Okay, so some, some centers, they cancel the PT, which was good. But all these kids used to complain that, you know, we have so much to do and this PT is wasting our time. What Ashok would do is that the night before the PT, he would find some problem that he cannot solve. So he has looked at the problem and he doesn't know how to solve it. Throughout the time the PT is going on, he is thinking about that problem. He is thinking about different ways to solve it. So even though he is doing some exercise or whatever, mentally he is using the time for something else. He also did the same thing when he is in line for getting food. You know, so he is spending time going through that. So what, what he was able to do was, he had a lot of time efficiency. Like what would normally be time that would not be study time for, so when he's doing PT, he's thinking, when he's in line for food, he's thinking, and he's trying to think about what is the way to kind of solve these problems. And at that time when Ashok went through the program, all the kids used to be sent back to the home GNV. So 
about two months after before the exam, the coaching ended and people were sent back to all their journeys. It was a terrible system because last two months you really need to focus and study. So Ashok was telling me that he was very concerned that he'll forget everything. He said, Jobi Padaya, we do mahine jayenge. So he spent the two months taking the test for the last 30 years over and over. So he took we gave them, you know, 30 years of past IIT tests. So every day he would take one or two tests. And then he would go through all the questions he didn't know answers to and how to solve them and all of that. So the last 60 days, all he was doing was he was taking that, that test over and over, over again. And by the time the real test showed up, he was ready, you know, he was, he was completely ready for it. So I think the thing to do, what I can suggest to you is that it's a, it's a very tough program. Lots and lots of questions are very hard to answer, impossible to answer sometimes. Break the problem down and try to see. So what we should all be trying to do is we should try to be the best version of ourselves. We cannot be the best person in the school or in the class or whatever, but we can be the, be the best version of ourselves. So look at the situation, look at, okay, uh, JE is big, it's too much to think about but break the problem down, you know, so okay, this one problem I'm not able to figure out, but I think I can figure it out, so let me spend more time on it and take it from there. So that's the best I can suggest. But also I think it's very important to have the right friends and so that you adopt their habits. And shall we take one more question? Okay, one more, let's do one more question, yeah. I am Ashish Kumar from JNV Eta Uttar Pradesh. Sir, thing is that I want to become a good engineer. Sir, but my parents wanted me to be a doctor. Sir, my question is that how would I convince them for this? Thank you, sir. Okay. So, now the situation is that you have to go class in JEE. And there is no need to go here. Right? And your parents know that. So uh, what do they want you to do? Do they want you to leave this place and go somewhere else? What do they want you to do? So they want you to also take the NEET exam? Right. So uh, please have a seat. So our parents have a lot of ideas about what should happen to us. That's okay. They can have those ideas. I think that uh, if if you are able to talk to them and say that my interest is somewhere else, right? They will, they will usually think that interest can be changed, right? So the best, the best we can do, so I have two pieces of advice for you. If your parents are somewhat reasonable people, then you can just, just repeatedly state that you are doing things that are of interest to you. And medicine is not of interest to you. And that is that. The, the second is, you can just be quiet. You know, they are saying whatever they are saying, ignore what they are saying. And just keep it going. And then as it is, they have, they probably already given up. Because you are already in a JE center you're going to take a JE test, you're not learning bio at all. So already that path is being closed off. There's a kid who went to school with my daughter. So this family, in, when we were in California, this family is a family of Sikh doctors. So all, they're like many brothers, they are all doctors, they are in very advanced fields. All his cousins, they all became doctors. His brother became a doctor. It was, ex it was expected in this family that the only thing you can study is to become a doctor. Nothing else is really allowed, right? So this guy, Kabir, basically, he had no interest in being a doctor. So he told them when he was in high school, when he was 16, 17 years old, I'm not going to become a doctor. So I talked to Kabir. I said, Kabir, when you told your parents that you're not going to become a doctor, 
what happened? He said, they were in shock. They didn't even know how to respond to me. They said, how can you even think about something else? So Kabir was very clear that he wants to be a software programmer. So he went, he went to college, became software programmer, this, that, and he's really good. So he got a job at Facebook, and now, he's, now he left the job, he's at a startup, and he's making a lot of money. He's making more money than all his doctor cousins, because he's extremely good at what he does. So I met him actually recently, I, I was in New York, I, my, my daughter, we went for dinner and I ran into Kabir. So I said, now it has been like five years, he's been working for over five years. So I said, Kabir, what's the situation now with the family? He said, I showed them my tax return. Okay. And they don't say anything now. So one of the reasons they were interested in the people becoming doctors was doctors in the US make a lot of money. They do well. That's one of the reasons they were interested. So they saw that Kabir makes more money than all the doctors. And so he said, now they don't care. They're fine. Everything's okay. So what will happen is that maybe at 15, 16, 17, your parents were very interested that you should become a doctor. I think once you start, you're already here, you're going to go to college and so on, they will realize that for whatever reason it didn't happen and they're just going to accept it. So it'll be okay. Everything will work out okay in the end. So don't worry about it. It'll be fine. A lot of parents have a lot of ideas and not all those ideas are right. And we don't want to upset them. We can be quiet. We can just be more diplomatic and we can sort that issue that way. So uh, it was great to spend time with you. I am hoping that if I don't do it, you guys will open the Sprinting Academy. If you IIT, you will have a little bit of a sprinter in India, then it will be fun. Then I'll go to the Olympics and it'll be fun. You know, one time I was watching the 10,000 meter, you know, 10,000 meters, they run around a track, they're going 25 times, 400 meter track, 25 times the 10,000 meters. And it was a final. So I saw that in the final, there is a Nepali. I said, let's go, India is not from India, Nepal is from Nepal, that's good. Some guy named Bahadur was, was running for Nepal. So the, what, what the funny thing that happened, which was I was watching on the track, is he was about three or four rounds behind the leader. Okay, so not that he's like six, 400 meters behind or 300 meters behind. He was like 2,000 meters behind the leader. Like five rounds he's behind. So there's a lot of excitement because the leader is about to cross the finish line. But Bahadur is with him because Bahadur still has four more rounds to go, but he's with the leader at that point. And uh, of course, then the race ended. Everyone has left. Bahadur is still running. You know, he's just trying to complete the race, right? And uh, so I just, I just found it funny that uh, it looked like he was one of the winners because he was uh, running with the winners, but that was not to be. So anyway, it was great spending time with all of you and uh, wish you all the best. Focus, stay focused on the exam. You have very few days and months left. And all the best. Thank you. Thank you.